new vintage military watches. That's a great genre. But the question is now, are these pieces really wearable in your everyday life? Let's find out. Welcome to Caseback Watches. My name is Tim and our topic today is Presidus, American brand specialized in new vintage military watches. So new watches inspired by the past. And they often have collaborations with actual veterans to, yeah, to promote their timepieces. And to be honest, this made me in the beginning a bit suspicious because I thought, is it really legit or should you do marketing with actual veterans? And then I noticed that they are willing to um, make unpopular decisions. Unpopular, really unpopular decisions like tiny watches that really follow these pieces from the past, but they're tiny. Or they come with a crown cap on a hinge, which is also not very popular. Or the watch comes with a lug width of 16 millimeters like the piece I have here on my wrist or snapped case bags, for example, that can reduce water tightness to 50 meters, like in this case. Like in this case, this watch I'm going to show you in the light box in a minute. And so all these unpopular decisions showed me that they are somewhat real, that they really mean it, that they stick to their genre, that they don't put out the 40 millimeter dive watch with a nice engraving on the back and that's it. And now Presidus offers two new models, two new A two models so we're talking about a very um, let's say simple Flieger watch from the 50s and now they have a cooperation with two veterans two actual veterans but Anderson and Diz Laird I hope I'm not butchering this name two friends that became both pilots and served in the Second World War and in Korea and you see very very iconic aircrafts here P-51 Mustang flown by Anderson and the F4F Wildcat flown by Laird. And these watches look a bit different and you have a lot of options regarding straps and packaging. For example, they offer a, a collector's edition with both watches and original signatures from these, from these old pilots here. And with a bit of luck, you can get a piece of metal, very special piece of metal, because the first 100 watches here come with an actual piece from a Mustang or Wildcat aircraft. Prejudice A2 Bud, and as always, measurements first. Here we have a watch with a case diameter of 36 millimeters. The length, luck to luck, is 43.5. The height is 14, and the lug width is 16, 16 millimeters. Then we have a sapphire crystal and a screw down crown, and they are available with two movements. You can choose between the Seiko NH35 or a Swiss-made Sobrot P024 movement, automatic, both are automatic movements. And you have, of course, a difference in price. So the basic version with the Swiss movement goes for 595 US dollars. This is roughly 550 euros. And the version with, uh, with the Seiko movement is more affordable. There we're talking about 315 US dollars, and this is around 290 euros all indicated without any form of VAT and they offer a set a collector's box and there you have the NH35 for $600 and the Swiss made for $1,100 US dollars. This is the price here. Okay, let's begin here with the dial. So we are again in the, in the genre military watch and so of course legibility is the key feature here. No distraction whatsoever, only functional elements like minute track um, extremely legible numerals and these hands with massive loom inside. The second hand is rather simple, unloomed. And the interesting feature is, of course, that you don't have interesting features <laughs> anymore on the dial. There's no prejudice, there's no branding and wording and writing on the dial whatsoever, only functionality. And so this is a first sign that they really stick to their genre, that they, that they don't overload the watch with, with marketing, at least not. Um, the dial here and it's just fun to see it. I, I'm really a big fan of unbranded watches. Same thing with the Stover, no logo watches. They're great, absolutely great. A bit of a shame is that they opted here for Sapphire Crystal. Um, I mean, yes, it is state of the art, but this watch with um, with a plexi would look just nice, I think. But I get it, um, people are extremely intolerant <laughs> against plexiglass. 
these days so I can't see why they've done this. Unmarked crown by the way, just the blank crown, very cool again without any form of branding. Here you see the case back, a lot of information, World War II, triple A's, number of the watch, then you have of course his signature there and limited edition Bud Anderson and, and so on. And they opted for a snap case bag and this is of course very unusual nowadays. Um, but it's, for me it's another sign that they really stick to, the, to their genre because these old watches came mostly with snapped case bags. Although you find, I think you find some with screwed down case bags, I'm not sure, but you definitely find snap case bags there. And I must say this looks okay doesn't look flimsy in any form and <clears throat> to be honest I try to open it with a guitar pick sometimes this works and there's not a risk that you scratch the watch and it was impossible so it's really really tough there but now what what do I mean with quirky dimensions well 36 of course is contemporary the originals were smaller but now they combined these 36 millimeters with a height of 14 which is very unusual and gives the watch some sort of a chubby look definitely chubby look and they opted for a 16 millimeter lug width which is extremely quirky and you will have a hard time to find straps for that for that model because you have to go to the ladies department um, and there you find only rather short straps so this cr could create a bit of a problem you have to buy your straps then from Presidus. this um, I'd like to mention here so overall very quirky package when it comes to the dimensions but it follows sort of the original watch I have to state I didn't handle an original from World War II but I've seen many images and they were rather small and rather chubby and I think the 60 miller lug width is here chosen to maintain the proportions of the watch so that all the relations in size are here as close to the original as possible but definitely you are a bit in the field reenactor with these dimensions here all right and now let's operate it screw down crown is mentioned works fine and now it's very simple of course you have only one position there's not a ghost position and so with one position you can just set the time it's a hackable movement as you can see and there you go this is the saw prod as mentioned and feels just nice really really smooth and good let's close it again and there you go and here you see the 36 millimeter on my 17 centimeter wrist rather chubby you see the height you see a rather long strap and I think this is done willingly because some people or some people during the World War wore these watches over their, over, their, over their jacket. And so there you need a long strap. We know this from dive watches as well. And you see the typical clasp, by the way, as a reference to yeah, the Thule watches from the military. And there you are. Let's go outside. Let's enjoy it in the morning sun. Okay, welcome back. And now let's continue here as always with your images, the images you sent to Caseback Watches at iCloud.com so that we can enjoy your watch collection, your site, your interests here. And the first image comes from Rap from Scotland. And he writes, good evening, Tim. Thanks for all the great content. My pleasure, my pleasure. Here's a couple of pics of my Boulder Expedition 2. I was out with my daughter on a visit to the park and walk along the foreshore of the tidal river Forth in Scotland, enjoying what passes for a summer evening. Boulder, yeah, interesting. My experience with this brand is zero, but looks very tooly, and so I included it in this video with, with, with the crosshair and all these elements. And we can see that you are a more casual and, and robust gentleman, and so fits your style. Absolutely, great watch, so thank you very much for sending this in. And the next video, the next image, not the video, the next image comes from Andreas and he writes, Hi Tim, talking about the Laurier Gemini that I saw in yellow in your last video, this Nero version is more my style. Greetings from Manchester, UK. 
um, yeah, last week we saw that watch in yellow on Tomica's wrist looked amazing and here we have another version and here we have the plexi you can do it with a plexiglass actually laurier puts a little um, little polishing cloth and some substance uh, for every watch so that you can rub away tiny scratches yourself and i want to encourage you to try it out um, it's, it's, it's really not that risky to wear a, a, a plexi all these laurier lovers do it every day i own a Laurier myself and I'm absolutely happy with it so don't be afraid of the plexi and Andreas thank you very much for sending this in and dear viewer if you have something to share with us then feel free to use casebackwatches at icloud.com that email address horizontal formats look best on screen all right and that's it for this video thank you very much for your attention and until next time